getting results. You want to be an expert at rising above the negative waves of change. Associate with people. The change just never affects them. They pass through it just like electricity through metal. It doesn't affect them. By the way, can I get an agreement with you? Are there some people on this planet that love change? They thrive on chaos, right? They love it. They get excited. And the moment things get complacent, they get bored. Well, you want to find out what they're doing. And several of the things that I'm going to discuss with you the rest of the day are some of the things that they're doing that will help you be just as successful as they are. It is critical that when you are going through any type of negative change that you do not hang out or associate with negative, toxic, crying, whining, bitching, moaning, vampire, negative people. Any questions? The more you, I heard applause. <laughs> The more you associate with that type of mindset, the more they're going to poison you. Correct? You want to associate with the people that while you're climbing the ladder of success, they hold the ladder steady for you. Not the scum of the earth that moves it to another wall when you're not looking. The more negative people you associate with, the more like them you become. It's the complete opposite of the law of modeling. I mean, you heard this nursery rhyme when we were children. It's such a shame that adults don't appreciate these nursery rhymes anymore because this nursery rhyme is a perfect example of modeling. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack came down, broke his crown, Jill came tumbling after. That's what she gets for hanging out with a loser. <laughs> Right? We teach that to kids. There's a, a powerful subconscious message there. The more you associate with that positive mindset, the more you can associate with the people that thrive of the chaos of change. It's like you can hitch a ride with them, and it will affect you less. The goal here, again, please forgive me, repetition is the mother of learning. The goal is to show you how to survive the transition zone. You will die if you hang out with toxic people. I read this book a while ago. It's called Working with Jerks. <laughs> Great book. That is the exact title. Please forgive me. I do not know the author. Oh, well, I read this book a while ago. Great, great book. I read the last paragraph of the book. It made such an impression on me that I had it memorized. I mean, can you imagine that? You read one paragraph and it's completely memorized. And it goes like this. If everyone you work with is a jerk and everyone you know is a jerk and everyone you meet is a jerk and everyone that calls on the phone is a jerk and all your customers are jerks and all your managers are jerks and your desk buddies are jerks, chances are the jerk is you. Wow. Wow. That's deep, okay? And, and I always remember saying to myself, what a great book, but what a negative way to close the book. I spent $12 for the book, he calls me a jerk. And I'm thinking to myself, why didn't he open the book with that paragraph? And then, of course, I knew the answer, because if people heard that, they wouldn't buy the book. People don't want to hear that crap. They want to blame everything on everybody else. But the fact is, it's our perception that is creating all of that for us. Perception rules every area of your life. There's this woman driving down a mountain, and there's this man driving up a mountain, and as they pass, he rolls down his window and says, Pig! Pig! And she rolls down her window and yells, Drop that! And just as she turns a corner, she runs over and kills a pig. You get it? <laughs> it's all perception. All of it. All of it is perception. This guy goes into a restaurant. I'll do some Rodney Dangerfield here for you. This guy goes into a restaurant, orders lobster. The waiter brings the lobster to the table. The customer says, I'm not eating that lobster. That lobster's missing its left claw. The waiter says, well, we know the claw's missing but it's the largest lobster we have. I mean, you're getting like triple the lobster for the price. Customer says, I don't care how big the lobster is. I don't need a lobster where the claw's missing. He says, sir, forget the claw. Look how big the lobster is for the price. Customer says, I don't care how big the lobster is. You bring me a smaller one. I want a lobster with both claws. I don't eat defective lobster. 
The waiter says, sir, I'll be very upfront with you. The lobster lost that claw in a fight. And the customer says, bring me the winner. I want to eat the winner. <laughs> okay? And that's the type of mindset you need when you're going through change. You want to associate with that type of mindset because they pull you down with them, the negative ones. How many of you agree, yes or no? Can I take one negative, toxic, jaundiced, low-life person, put them in a group of 25, they can bring the morale of the whole unit down, yes or no? Of course. On the other hand, the opposite is true. I can take someone that's got like that positive mindset, they just have that glow about them. You put them in a group of negative people, they can start making you laugh, start making you feel good about yourself, and before you know it, maybe the outside things don't change, but you feel better about them. Number one, you've got to ask yourself positive questions to change your perception. Number two, write it out with scan. Number three, modeling. Be careful who it is that you associate with. The people that you associate with help you rise or bring you down. So far, so good with that. Can I keep going? Okay, number four, remember we had to talk about eight of them.